and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am going to paint this ring binder. Um, whatever you guys call it. You know, you put holes in your paper and you stick them in there. We call them a ring binder. So, see look, it's even printed on the... This is not an advert for impact. Um, I grabbed this one because it's like craft paper. It's... But as I started to peel this off, it took that top layer off as well. I was like, ah, frustrating. Look at that. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. A little bit of sanding and we'll be good to go. I can buy my sandpaper. I had a big tidy up this morning. My, um... My studio was looking an absolute pigsty, so when you can't get into your studio, you know it's time to, oh look, that's come up really well, um, you know it's time to have a clean up. That one came off better. Okay, so, give that a bit of a rub too, because it's got some sticky. There we go. We're good to go. So, I'm just going to some of these containers down to sit it on and the reason I'm putting them up this way and not upside down which is how I usually do it oh look all bits of resin um is because I want to be able to put the ring binder part into there and look it's perfectly flat how does it get any better than that awesome so now we have our what we're painting on Let's have a look at what we're going to do with it. What I have planned for this is one of my famous gravy separator jug sandwich pours. And um, those of you that have been around a while have seen me do this a few times. Quite a few of you have actually bought your own gravy separator jug. And um, so let's have a look at what colors we're going to put on this now this is actually a a folder that i'm going to use to put the business accounts in for glenn's concrete business so i started off thinking that i was actually going to put do a gravy separated jug sandwich pour with just white and black and I was thinking, oh, well, you know, that's that's cool and all, but yeah, I want another colour in there. <laughs> so what I'm gonna throw in there, because concrete quite often has a bit of a a blue hue to it at times, a grey blue. So I'm gonna put some deep turquoise in, just because I can, you know? So we've got the deep turquoise. We've got the Mars Black, and we've got the Spring House Paint. Um, and for those of you in New Zealand and Australia, I get this from Bunnings. It's like 80 bucks for a 4 litre pail, which, the Americans, it's just over a gallon. Um, and that is so, so, no, sorry, 40 bucks. For a 10 litre pail um, which is so so cheap it's just ridiculous so um, this I mix with flow troll and water and a little bit of PVA glue just so that it's got enough binder in it and the other two are literally just flow troll and water but I do desire to have some cells in here and i've got so i'm going to put the turquoise um i'm going to put some silicon silicon into the turquoise so let's start off by doing that uh as i said all my paints are mixed with flow troll and water and i used i use reeves fine artist acrylic um 
they've actually changed their packaging recently so these are the two versions of their packaging if it's got a big intro word across it it's the wrong one um yay my husband's home was not impressed today he had to go to work because the staff didn't finish a job yesterday and today is saturday i know you're seeing this probably tuesday or something but so we have silicon in there no silicon in the black and no silicon in the white now i worked this out i gave it a quick measure and it's roughly um Thirty centimeters, which is twelve inches ish, by sixty centimeters, which is twenty-four inches ish. And so, a twelve by twenty-four. And we got eight, four, four, one, eight, four, eight, one. So we need about two hundred mils of paint or um what's that divided by 30 30 60 90 180 about six and a half fluid ounces of paint how's that get any better than that <laughs> square inches of the canvas is the number of milliliters of paint and there's 30 milliliters in a fluid ounce that's my calculation process all right let's just check that this black is a good consistency to play with looking good all right so a sandwich pour if you think of a sandwich you've got a piece of bread and another piece of bread and the colored stuff is in the middle ham lettuce tomato or peanut butter and jelly or whatever you put in the middle that's got color in it right so we put down the white although i use homeware bread but not in painting i don't have wholemeal painting so put in the white i need 200 mils um gonna put in some turquoise And some black, not so much black. And then we're going to top it up with white. And technically you're supposed to try and get the white on the top for the sandwich. If we can. But it's not happening. So let's just pour it in anyway. <laughs> the, uh top slice of bread got a bit munted in there guys <laughs> how's it get any better than that all right so i'm already seeing the silicon playing and having some fun in there so that's cool i'm pleased about that and the tip for using the gravy separator jug when you are both doing it to separate the fat from the gravy and from when you're um, doing paint the idea is not to tip it out of this is to tip it out of this does that make sense so how am I going to do this I'm actually going to do it um, Sort of like rectangle pour. Some of you have seen me do my little snail pour, which is like a traveling ring pour round and round and round and round, and round in circles. And I'm 
just going to keep going round and round and round in rectangles. Well, we've kind of got to ovals now, haven't we? Might have to slow down a little bit as it drains. Or not. We could just give up. Yeah, it looks pretty cool like that. I quite like it. What do you guys reckon? My hand is steadier as I go that way than it seems to be that way. I'm not sure that it's my hand or not, but. So let's see what the cells are going to do before we start moving it around. And if you haven't seen a um, acrylic pour before, I'm just using a butane torch to warm the paint. And this invites the silicon to the top. And you can see those little cells happening. I'm going to put a little bit more white in here because as per normal I have done ah that was not the plan eek oh well adds character I shouldn't have poured that over top of my painting. Look at this. Oh, it's right about that I'm not getting. So what I'm aware of is that I actually don't have enough paint on there. So I'm just adding some more. And let's scrape the rest of that paint down to the funnel. And just go into the corners. Okay, so let's stretch. I'm going to go to the two ends first. And that'll give me some indication as to whether or not I have still have enough paint or whether I need to add some more. And just by looking at this, I am going to need to add some more. So my... Calculation was not correct. What do you reckon? All right, let's add some more. Oh, crikey. That was a big blob to start with. Try not to get my head in the way.
see how just by touching that little bit of wet and giving it somewhere to run that paint's already started to stretch itself out So first thing I'm going to point out to you is I am going to tilt that way next. Um, when you have stretched your paint already, oh, this is not working. Um, when you've stretched your paint already and you've got adding some more, you really do want to um, tilt so that what you've added runs stretches itself out otherwise if I tilt it this way I'm going to just get these big blobs of white go careering across there which is not what I want um, before I do go any further I'm just going to get any air bubbles out and sometimes there we go see look Sometimes when you stretch your silicon, uh, your paint out, the silicon can rise up and make more cells. So that's what I'm doing with that lot, is just giving it a chance to um, pop its head up so that as I tilt, it can be stretched as well. So look how big these have stretched while I tilted. Okay, so let's tilt that way. Can I go off that corner? Come back. Oh, we've got a lump in there. Let me zoom you in and show you. See how that it's doing a weird spirally bit there. It's a really good indication that you've got a lump. So it's always good to have handy um, something that you can use as tweezers. I use um, push pins and just go either side and pick it out just like that. And I am collecting my pickouts now. Somebody on one of my live streams recently talked about the leftovers from um, car painting. And I was like, I could do a leftovers. <laughs> right, so that there. Now let's. Stretch it that direction now. Uh. And bring it back, try and straighten some of those cells out a bit. Okay, and now's the time Brighten this up a bit. Now's the time to come over here and add the other thing about adding the paint to the side you're about to stretch. is the weight of this bulk of paint is going to drag this colored paint which is starting to thin out quite considerably um, so that weight will drag it down if you think of hanging a wet shirt on the a wet jersey on the line and then 
your grandson come and tug on the bottom of it it's gonna stretch the jersey <laughs> um, in this case it's a good thing what's that so let's tilt And if it doesn't stretch that much on the colour, I'm not too worried about it. Because, as I say, it's a accounts folder. <laughs> um, I went to take the accounts to the accountant the other day and didn't have a folder to put it in. So, it's a really good excuse to go to the stationers and get myself a folder. And... Something to paint. There we go. Now I can write foundations and floors. <laughs> it's got a room. It's got room for that. I really like it. Just love that turquoise colour. It's so yummy. You know what? You guys know what I'm going to say. That could make a really cool material. <laughs> oh, very dark. Okay, I like it. I like it a lot. So let's get you down. Oh, hold on. Before I do, I'm going to talk to you one more time. Yep, still getting new cells. Ooh, that was a good idea. Right, I'm going to get you down and take you for a tour. Okay, let's start over on this end. We have got some really pretty stuff happening over here. I really... I love this one, and I really like where I picked out that lump. It's kind of done this whole little bow thing. It's down in there. How cool is that? And it's got some really lovely, lovely cells. Look at those multi-layers. I love it. <laughs> Lots of eyes. That kind of looks a bit like a tadpole froggy looking thing. Really love the way these three colours, well, white, black and turquoise have come together so you see, just see there the two little ridge marks where the ring binder bends love it, I love it, I love it How's it getting any better than that? What else is possible? So guys, I am going to let this dry and come back to you shortly. Okay, here it is. It's dry, look. Do, 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 do. Now the only thing is, it is a little bit warped. But that's okay, we're warping can be changed 
won't take much. Stick it in a cupboard in a, in a filing unit. But I tell you what, it won't get lost in that filing unit. Oh, wow. That's cool. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. And it's actually quite textured because it was on cardboard. Well, it was like craft paper over cardboard, wasn't it? And it's quite textured. I don't know if you guys can. It's kind of got that cardboard texture to it. Which is great. I like it. And it's very matte. I think I, I will definitely varnish this. Um, just to give it some protection from being thrown around in an office. Uh, it's not something that's going to just hang on a wall and be pretty. Uh, it is going to get used. So it does need some protection. I've had people asking me recently do I seal my work because I don't show it to you sealed afterwards um most of them would be the answer to that uh not every painting that I do and show you on these videos uh, ends up as really surviving um <laughs> uh it is Definitely a, um, they get varnished as I decide they get varnished. Uh, and if they never quite meet that criteria, then they never get varnished. Um, why would you varnish? Well, one reason, as in this situation, uh, the, the paint itself, I mean, acrylic paint you paint your house with it, guys. Out, you know, it's it's a stable paint form, and once it's cured, give it a couple of weeks to really give it real good cure, um, and it it's good to go. I mean, we paint our houses with it inside and out, so it it's not non durable. What I the two reasons I do mine. One is to give it that extra coat of longer lasting chew. Um, you know, if fly muck gets on it, if dust gets on it and you take a cloth to it, you know you're only cleaning the surface. You're not actually going to get anywhere near the paint. Um, and the other thing is oftentimes when you varnish your paint like a lot of people say oh my god my painting's gone dull after they've dried and i really like it in this one um but, um but when they do go dull often they'll pop back out if you put a varnish on them um they really do change quite dynamically once you varnish them especially if you use a gloss varnish so this one is going to, I'm going to give it, give it a week or so to dry, clean off the silicon, and we will see how it likes working. <laughs> I got a job for it. Uh, obviously, if you bags it before it gets into the office, then you can, you can definitely buy it, but... Um, if it's not bought, by the time it reaches the office, it's off the table. Anyway, guys, I have enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I really enjoyed this painting. That was fun. And um, I really love the result. I love that color combination. So I will be going live sometime this week. If you are not already signed up on mickeyart.co.nz forward slash sign up and would like to know when I go live, I give you like a day's notice. I'm not going to say 24 hours because sometimes it's 22 or 20. Um, but you get the day before notice. Or at least when you wake up, there's notice that it's going to be that day. Because if you just subscribe to my channel, you just have to randomly guess and be home on time. So subscribe if you want to know that. If you don't, don't. Um, and... 
come join us on acrylic pouring for fun it's a cool facebook group and i enjoy those people that choose to have fun in there um obviously if you are intense and you prefer camping than having fun <laughs> um sorry it's my little in joke we're not camping because we're not intense um if you if you are after knowledge if you're after judgment if you're after criticism don't come to our group because that's not what we're about if you would like some information uh you'd like to ask people for suggestions you're more than welcome if you uh just want a place to show off your work because nobody else appreciates you at home you're more than welcome we adore you all and um how much fun can we all have? That's my question. What else is possible beyond what we've chosen so far? I adore you all and I will see you very soon in a very new video. Bye bye.